I'm just posting this tutorial that you're about to watch for the free pattern that Shambhala Designs is giving out as a Christmas present to everybody being released on Boxing Day, which if you're seeing this, it's already Boxing Day. I am actually taping this on Christmas Eve, um, but I want to introduce you to the Guadalupe bag. This is a very, very fast sew. It's very easy. It's very stylish and it's a lot of fun. It's a great pattern. I don't believe it's a free pattern. Anyways, I did it with cork on top from M Cork Supply. Uh, this is a vinyl I actually found on clearance at uh, Fabricland, which was awesome. So as you can see, it's a shoulder bag. It's a larger shoulder bag. It has magnetic closure and a, an interior slip pocket. So that, yeah, the Guadalupe bag. So interfacing wise, I use Biani Soft and Stable Foam. On the bottom, I have Decaville 1. I keep calling it a Decaville Light in the video. No, I mean Decaville 1. I'm not going to change it, so <laughs> but that's what it is. All my hardware is from Emmeline Bags. Um, again, it's the Guadalupe bag by Shambhala Designs. Uh, go to her website, pick it up while it's still free. I don't know if it's free forever, but it might be. I'm not sure, so... Here you go everybody, the Guadalupe bag. Hope you enjoyed this video. Remember to give me a thumbs up if you like it. If you haven't already, please do subscribe to my channel. I have a lot more tutorials coming up in the new year. Thanks everyone, bye. Okay, so I'm going ahead and doing my straps and my uh, connectors. The connectors are not actually in the pattern. Um, I don't have the fancy connectors like in the Guadalupe pattern. So I'm actually going to do my hidden connectors. Um, so I won't walk through doing that in here. I do have a tutorial on how I do my hidden connectors and my uh, Bag Makers 101 playlist. I will somewhere on the screen here, uh, put a link to that. So if you wanna do them the way I'm doing them, you can definitely go and check it out in that playlist. Um, same with the straps. These straps are, the construction is exactly the same as all the other straps that I've done. Again, I have another uh, playlist or another tutorial on how to make the straps. So check those out. Uh, see how I make the straps. Or if you already know, you can kind of just fast forward through this and get to the next step. the first front panel and I'm going to do the second one with you. So this is three pieces. Um, I'm using cork on top and then this is a vinyl on the bottom. Um, this would be really fun in three contrasting. I didn't have any other vinyl that really matched or fabric that matched this cork and so I'm just keeping it with the two but definitely you could definitely do three different colors. So this is what we are going to achieve with the next panel. So I'll show you how I got this done. Okay, so grab your main top panel and your main contrast panel. What you wanna do is, I already have the centers marked, so I'm gonna mark my center, or join my centers in the middle here. And put them together.
Now you are going to notice it is going to stick out about um, a quarter of an inch or just under a quarter of an inch on each side and that is okay because it's slightly curved there, slightly rounded, they will even out or we will trim it off later on. Okay, and then we wanna sew that on with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And I'm playing a little bit of chicken with my bobbin, but I don't quite wanna change it out yet. <laughs> And then what we want to do is we want to make sure that the seam stays pointing this way because we want it to be under this uh, main contrast panel here. So if you lay it flat like this and you push it forward like so, it'll keep that seam going the direction you want it to go. And then we're going to top stitch that with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Just kind of feel along the way just to make sure that that seam is still going this way. You can see even though it had been sticking out, it ended up going, this one has a little bit extra on it, but we'll just trim that off. Okay, and then the next step is you're gonna take your, where is it? Your exterior bottom main panel that looks like this. And again, you're gonna match up your centers. And clip it all the way across. So again, the center um, contrast band here, you could do that in fabric as well. I'm just going for a all vinyl cork type looking exterior of the bag for this one. Okay, and then we're gonna put those together with a quarter of an inch allowance as well. And then what we want to do is make sure that we top stitch that seam towards this back panel again. So this one's a little trickier. You kind of got to turn it like this and push it down that way and finger press it. So you want it pointing upwards this way. Like that. Top stitch that with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Again, feeling I am gonna run out of bobbin, I think. We will find out. 
There we go, our second panel. So this is a very quick project. It goes together so quickly. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take these panels and I am going to um, base them onto my foam interfacing. Uh, you could probably use Decabill Light if you wanted to, if you didn't want quite a lofty thing, or even fleece if you want it to be softer. I am going to use Biani Soft and Stable Foam. Um, and while I'm off camera, I'm also going to be installing... Um, my invisible invisible connectors. I don't have the fancy connectors that she has in the pattern, so I'm kind of making my own connectors. So I'm going to do it my invisible connectors method, which I do have a, as I said before, a, a, a tutorial on how to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and do that offline. I'm going to put my plaque on it. I'm going to attach it to the foam and the bottom piece. I'm also going to attach to foam and put on my purse seat. And then we'll come back and we will put the exterior together. Okay, I'm back. So at this point, I have installed my purse feet. One thing I did add into this um, that wasn't in the pattern was I did put outside of the seam allowance some uh, deck of a light just to make it a little stiffer on the bottom. Um, if you're using a domestic machine, make sure you're keeping your foam or your fleece, whichever you decided to use outside of the seam allowance just to reduce the bulk. I didn't do that because I'm on an industrial and I know it can handle going through those layers. So I went ahead and these are my hidden strap connectors. I unfortunately did not have any rectangle rings left in antique brass. So I am attempting to do it with D rings. So I think it'll be fine. It's all I have here. A couple days before Christmas, uh, there's nothing in stock anywhere. So, and I don't get my MLI in order till Wednesday. So I am using the D-rings. So we will see how that goes. So in the pattern, she had um, uh, special connectors, which you can get to like install on there. I did not have them. So again, I just improvised and did my invisible connectors. Um, so all you do is lay the pattern piece down, mark down your, your line where you're going to put your connector and install it on that one inch line. It's super, super simple, super easy to do it. So that's all there is to that. So now the next step is, oh, and I also put on my my plaque. One thing that's really good about Shambhala patterns is they always seem to take into account that we may have a, a business plaque or a handmade uh, thing we want to put there. So it marks it out for you where, where they suggest putting it. So it's never off center. It's always perfect. I love that. Okay, so we're going to take one of our main exterior panels and our bottom and we're going to put them right sides together and match it up. You can see we're going to be matching it up where it's notched out here, right here. So this is where the long side of the bottom is going to attach. hands are freezing it's snowing outside I'm in my basement studio and I just just can't get warm so that's why I'm wearing a sweatshirt <laughs> and my hands just do not want to function today my fingers are cold so please excuse my butter fingers if I'm dropping anything here okay so for the bottom and just the bottom we are going to be doing this seam allowance with a 3 8 7 inch seam allowance Whereas the rest of the bag is a quarter inch seam allowance. It's just along the bottom. So sew that bottom piece on. Thank you. 
And then we want to top stitch our seam allowance into place facing the bottom panel. So you're gonna lay it down like this and this is what we want to be pointing that way. So we're just gonna push this on top of itself like that and you'll see it gets it going the right way. And then we are going to top stitch, stop, blah, 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 top stitch that with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And I just kind of feel around and making sure it's going the right way. If you've used fabric, you can definitely press it the right direction, but for some reason vinyl, I can work with that. So it looks like that. And then you're gonna go ahead and do it with the other panel as well. Lay them on top of each other match up those, that short little edge there. So that one with a three eighths of an inch seam allowance as well. And again, we want to press the seam allowance so it's top stitched against the bottom of the bag. So, it's a tricky. Because I don't want to go the other direction. So, you kind of have to hold it into place so it's facing towards the bottom of the bag. So, this direction. I'm just going to kind of press it that way with my fingers so it's pointing this way towards the bottom. And untangle my thread here. What the heck is going on? There we go. Now it wants to go the other direction for me, so I'm going to have to make sure it's going the right way. very long for my table here. So this is what we end up with. So you lay it like this. You're going to put the right sides together. And we're not going, we're only going to match up the sides here. We're going to leave this part open. So we're going to box those corners. So match up each side and clip them together. So this side comes together so fast and so easy. It's a great pattern, a great, great pattern. And my bottom's really stiff because I put that Decaville light in there. That may not have been a good idea, I'm not sure. I like to have the Decaville in there because I load my bags right up heavy. It just makes it so they don't sag. And then do the 
the other side as well. Oh, I guess I should mention. Now we want to make sure that we line up our lines here. So you want to make sure that where our panels change, that they match we match those seams up. I'm gonna to have to go back and check the other side. So we want to have a continuous line there. Okay. So I'll go back and check the other side. Maybe I got lucky and it's matched up. And same here, if you use you want to make sure those two seams here, that those lines are matched up as well. Just put them on top of each other. You know what? They matched up. I would have gotten lucky. Check the second one. Yeah, they matched up good without even knowing it. Okay, so now we're going to sew up these side seams with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. We're almost on the exterior of the bag. I said the bottom was a three eighths of an inch seam allowance. The sides are we're back to the quarter inch seam allowance that the pattern calls for. Okay, so And then do the same on the other side with the quarter inch seam allowance. Now it's just boxing those corners. So now we have something that looks like this on the front, and then we have these open holes on the side. And all we're gonna do with that is pull them flat up against each other and open up the seam like this. And they should fit really nice in there. See, just kind of flattens out like that. Open the seam, it'll make it easier to go over top of that stitch. So that first one, and what we're gonna we're gonna sew these corners with a three eighths of an inch seam allowance. Push, press, left, press. My goodness, I'm tongue tied today. Press that seam flat while you're going through. And sew it with three eighths of an inch seam allowance. to keep that seam open that you're going to go over with your fingers without sewing through your fingers. And what I'm going to do just to make give it a little bit more 
um, stability is I'm going to do another line at about a quarter of an inch just beside that just to strengthen those corners. In the line. Now that's not in the pattern. I just like to do that. like you can see my two lines of stitching there so this main one is three eighths and then that's the quarter of an inch and it's just to try to make it a little bit stronger in those corners and then do the other side That it's really stiff because I put that Decaville or Decaville one in here, so it's okay. And then three eighths of an inch, and then go just in and do a quarter of an inch. And make sure you're feeling where your purse feet are to make sure you're not <laughs> running them over and you accidentally put them in a little too far. I can feel mine right there. I'm okay. Oops, and I didn't get my stitch all the way. Again, just on the inside of that at a quarter of an inch so just to give it a little more strength and that's it we can turn the exterior of our bag See how the nice box corner makes a really sharp corner there. I just use my finger to poke them out. Get my seam allowances. and shape everything really good. You see my lines lined up really good here. And there she is, that's the exterior of the bag. It's really cute shape how it goes out and then kind of comes in at the bottom. First feet on the bottom. I will probably, once I have the whole bag together, I'm going to take some butterfly clips just to make these a little more crisp and set my seams that way. But that's what we have so far. So I'm going to go off camera now and I'm going to put my um, zipper pocket, my lining zipper pocket in. Again, um, the zipper pocket isn't in the instructions in the pattern. Uh, Sammy Wishambala does have a link to where you can see how she installs her her inside zipper. I do mine a little bit different. I do have a video and I will try to remember to put a link uh, for that video somewhere at the top of the screen here so you can see how I install my um, zipper lining. Because um, we will be doing my turning method as well, where we leave the bottom of the pocket open and a section of the bottom of the lining open, turn through the bottom of the lining, and then sew it up through the pocket. So um, that's all in that video, and we will go through that on here as well. So I am going to go and do that, and then we will uh, come back and we will do the construction of the lining and then putting it all together. All right, so we're on to the lining. So I went ahead and I installed my magnetic snaps. So on one side I put the female snaps. Um, 
I already have them covered with uh, Gorilla Tape here, but I also back them with a piece of Decaville 1 just to give it a little extra um, stability behind the snap. On the other top of the lining contrast piece, I have the male ones. So you just take the pattern piece, mark where they're going to go, and install those magnetic snaps as per the manufacturer's instructions for whatever snaps that you have. I also went ahead, as I said before, and I put in my zipper pocket, uh, left the bottom of it open, and you'll see why that is when we go to turn the bag. It's how I turn all my bags. So for the lining, all you have are your two lining pieces and your two contrast bands. So this is super, super easy. So I like to put my female magnetic snaps on the panel that I'm going to have at the back of the bag mainly because that is seen more than the front ones and I think that they're, the female snaps are prettier to be honest than the male ones. So you're gonna, we're going to pin it to the top of our lining panel here. like that and I'm just going to double check my seam allowance. I believe it's quarter of an inch for this. Quarter of an inch. And then we want our seam allowance to be facing the bottom part of the bag. So we're just going to flip it up, make sure it's pointing down like that. Finger press it. If this isn't vinyl, you can go ahead and press this with an iron. It's just important that it is pointing down towards the lining. And then we're going to top stitch that into place. just like that and then you go ahead and do that with your other side We are so close to being done. So now what we want to do is we want to put right sides together. First off, actually putting your snaps. So they are going to have to line up. Which we do. We want to line up where the seams of our bands meet so we have a continuous line. So clip those into place next. and clip the rest. Again, we're gonna leave the corners open because we are going to box those. 
If anybody's wondering about my interfacing, it's Fashion Fuse, but they have it in black as well, which is really nice actually for um, a darker lining. They were all out of the white, so I got the black and I actually kind of like it. Okay, and then on the other side, line up those seams. My hands are just freezing. I can't get warm today. I'm wearing a pair of fleece pants and a pair, another pair of pants over that. I'm wearing a t-shirt and a hoodie. Heat just clicked on, which is good. The vent's right above me, so I hope you guys don't hear that. Now, what we're also going to do at the same time is, is clip the bottom, but we're going to leave about six inches or so open for turning. So we won't be sewing in this middle part here. Okay, and so what we're going to do with this to have a tighter lining, which most Jimbala patterns do, actually a lot of uh, pattern designers do, is we are going to start with a quarter of an inch seam allowance at the top because we need that circumference of this top band to be the same as the exterior of the bag so they fit together well, but we want the lining to fit together tighter. So once we get past this band, we're going to branch out into approximately a half inch seam allowance to the bottom. Same with on, or on the bottom part, we're gonna do a half inch seam allowance up the side here. But then when we get close to this band, we're gonna go back to a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Everybody say hi to Coco there. Hey Coco. So you can see it starts small and then it branches out to a larger seam allowance there. The next step is to box our corners. So it's just like the exterior. You're going to kind of grab it like this here and you're going to pull these, these two seams here together. So what you're going to want to do is open up those seam allowances and match them up. size so I'll show you again what I did so it's like this I'm just opening it up and grabbing these and then pulling those two seams together and then opening those seams up to reduce the bulk and so they lay flat clipping them So across that with a half inch, I believe. Let me see, let me see. Yep. So half inch seam allowance along those box corners. try to re remember to clip my threads as I go because they get messy. 
I don't always succeed. <laughs> okay, so that's one corner boxed, and then we can go ahead and do the other side. like that so we have the exterior of the bag with our box corners it's got that round shape still and when you open it up here the inside of the bag and we still got the opening in the bottom here okay drink of water so our next step is putting it all together we are almost done let's grab the exterior of your bag and then you have to decide which part of the bag you want to be at the back of the bag and which to be at the front so i like my zipper pocket to be at the back of the bag so we're going to put the zipper pocket against the back of the purse as well and then we're going to take this and again it's going to be tight because we have sewn it smaller the lining smaller than what the actual bag is now somebody did recommend that you could put um, the lining into this one with the right sides together, but I'm a creature of habit and I do this. That other way could be easier, but this is just the way it works for me. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do is match up these side seams here. So the bags are right sides together. Lining is wrong side out. Match up those seams. Open them up if you can to reduce the bulk for when we're top stitching and sewing it around. And when you get to this part, there's never too many clips. Don't let anybody tell you there's ever too many clips. You want it to stay in place. And then go ahead and do the other side and match up those seams. So these seams here, here, and here. And again, I open up my seam allowances. And then kind of stretch it out and distribute that fabric good. If you had marked your centers, you could have matched them, but I did not do that. So I'm just going to guesstimate that center. It's fitting pretty good, so I'm pretty much there. them together along the top here with a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. And I like to sew from the inside of the bag for this. I find it easier so I just kind of push this out of the side and sew along this side here. Start in a central type spot.
right and then I just like to go along the outside and make sure it caught everything there and then along the inside make sure everything I've caught and then what we're gonna do is just because of the curves here we're just gonna go and put some little snips which doesn't say we have to trim the seam allowance no so just to make our corners easier we're gonna snip almost to the stitching line but don't go through it or else you'll get a hole just along that curved edge And if you use Gorilla Tape like I did, try to keep it out of the seam allowance. I didn't, so I'm hoping it won't pose a problem for me. But So we've got all those snips, so that'll make it easier uh, to get this nice curve shape for the bag. And then we take a deep breath and we get our arm workout of turning it through the bottom of the bag. So you have your opening here. And just reach in and birth the bag. It's usually hard at first, but once you get it through, it comes really easy. seems a little bit to make sure that there's no holes or anything missed and it looks good. Watch out your corners here as well and then stuff your lining into Once you've got that in there and it's looking good, you have no holes anywhere to worry about. Now we want to kind of clip it in place for our top stitching. So you want to pull this nice and flat. You want to make sure there's no puckering on either side. And because I am using vinyl, which doesn't always hold its shape, I just like to go around, oops, again, butter fingers, <laughs> and clip all the way around the bag.
then we're going to go along the top here and we're going to top stitch that with a 1 8 of an inch seam allowance. Now what I always do is I always check, take a piece of scrap vinyl that's quite thick and I just, especially on my Titan, I just want to make sure that my top stitching is even on both sides because it's going to be visible. Make sure my tension is good and what have you. It's perfect. So. Okay, and take a deep breath and start your top stitching. And you can turn the bag inside out and stitch it from the inside of the bag. Or you can do it from the inside of the bag right now. I'm just going to do it the old way, or this way. That's the way I like to do it. See if you're happy with the top stitching. Make sure there's no tucks or anything anywhere. It looks pretty good to me. I am happy with that. Make sure your snaps match. They should. And once you're happy with that top stitching, then we can seal up the bottom of the bag. So if you follow the pattern, you're just going to pull up the bottom of the bag. I'll show you. You'll just pull up the center of the bag and you'll turn these ends under and then top stitch along there. I can never make that look nice. I always end up with an ugly ridge I and I can't so super straight that way for some reason. So that's why I leave the opening in the pocket. So I pull my pocket out my opening in it. I reach in and I grab the opening in the bottom of the bag and I pull it out through that pocket. Now this is where I had a little bit of ripping because I didn't leave the hole big enough but I can fix that now. So you just take that opening, clip it shut and then seal it with that half inch. And this leaves a seamless finish to the bottom of your bag. You will still have that ridge in the pocket, but nobody sees the bottom of the pocket, so it's a win-win situation. Okay. Okay. So I just start on top of where the stitching finished when I was doing the bag lining originally. Do a back stitch. Stitch across. Okay. 
make sure there's no holes after you cut everything. And you did. And you stuck that back in through the pocket. Look inside the bag. I don't know if you can see. Double check. There's no hole there anymore. And then you take the pocket, which we already have folded under. And we're going to top, top stitch that closed. Pocket back in the pocket. My phone is almost out of battery. We're just going to barely get this done here. Zipper up. And then all that's left to do is to attach the handles. And I attach my handles the same way I do with all the bags. I just uh, put them on and I rivet them on. And that is the finish, once those handles are on, of the Guadalupe bag by Shambhala Designs. I just have to say thank you so much, Sammy, for this wonderful Christmas present that you are giving all of us of this free pattern for Boxing Day. Hope everybody had a wonderful uh, Christmas, regardless of um, COVID and all that. I hope everybody stayed safe, stayed in. I'm going to be having Zoom Christmas. Well... I will have had it already because I'm doing this before Christmas and this is release Boxing Day, but we're going to have a digital Christmas, so it's all good. Anyways, thanks everybody for visiting my channel. I hope you like this tutorial. There's many more to come. Again, this is the Guadalupe bag by Shambhala Designs. Thanks everyone. Have a great day. Bye. Thank you.